So the first reason will be you want a job interview, you know. Simply the fact that as you are looking for a job interview, you prepare your portfolio because you will do this, you will discuss that in a job interview. Um, then they, in that case, you have to point out the artifacts that will get you that job. So you really have to focus on the job description in order to show exactly what they need. Remember, you have to show them what they need and what they look they, what they look for. The second will be to get a favorable performance review. Some of the jobs, they do a performance. So how well are you doing in your job? So in my job, they do performance review over three years. So I create my portfolio and show all the activities I have done in the three years that shows are a completely scholar. I have a community activities. I have research activities. I have teaching activities. So how make me that global? So because it's a performance interview uh, review, each of the jobs will have the ways that they evaluate that. So you need to focus on what they're evaluating. And then you have to show them that you actually did it right. The third one is related with performance interview, but it's different, is to get a raise. Suppose you are in the job for three or four years and you say, you know what, I think I deserve a raise. Okay, this time of this era that we have crisis probably is not that easy, but it's not impossible. So you can create your portfolio before sitting with your boss or the person who would have the decision to make the, you the race and say, listen, until right now I have done this and this and this. And this has benefit to us in this way, in this way, in this way. Remember your 45 words. Select the artifacts and select how the company has benefited with your skills. After you show all of this, then we, talk, we can talk about race. Another way is, if some companies cannot give you the race because of the economic situation, but you can get a promotion. So you can use the same style of getting the race, but okay, don't give me extra money, but give me a recognition, a promotion. So again, you show what you have done through the years and how these things have impact positively your work. Okay, so you can get a promotion. That would be the fourth thing, you know, raise, promotion. And then another thing would be change careers. Suppose suddenly you are in a moment in your life and, and what when I was talking with some of you, I, I can hear some of you are in this moment. And then you say, I want to change my career. I want to do something differently. Okay, or maybe switch it a little, or tweak it a little bit. In that case, that is your, when your portfolio is come from. Because you will say, wait a minute, it's a completely new career. I don't have any, any artifacts, nothing to show. But will show your ability to apply knowledge in previous career. This is what I did in my previous career, so wonderful. And I believe all this knowledge and wonderful that I have applied can be used in this new career. Okay, and probably because if you want to change career, more likely you have done some things that can relate with your new goals. And the last thing will be to get into college or graduate school. You know, some of you are in the in the time and say, you know what, I want to go to graduate school or college. Never is late for that. Never late. My father went to college to no college to doctoral program when he was 80. He say he said, you know what. I want to be a doctor. So he took his six years and he graduated and was 80. So never late. So for that you need to also create a portfolio so to make your point why in whatever age or moment in your life you decided to be part of the graduate school and that will help you to get some scholarships or maybe assistantships and work in the school. So all of these things will help you, depending on what is your goal, will help you to actually create your portfolio. Now the big question here is, what should you include in that portfolio? Because it depends on your goal, it will depend, you know, what you will include. Of course you have to include your bio, and we already practiced how to do a beautiful bio. You have to include always how people can communicate with you. Some people forget about, they, do, they have a beautiful thing and there is no way to communicate with the person. You have to be, be, be available for whatever person wants to communicate with you. Your skills, your resume, your experience, your education and training. We're talking like a LinkedIn profile. 
So what you truly include in your portfolio will depend on what is your goals. And we already mentioned six goals. You probably have something different. So basically what you will do, of course, you include your bio, your, uh, your, your brief uh, summary of who you are, your skills, your experience, your education and training. Sounds familiar? It's like doing your LinkedIn profile. But in this case, your LinkedIn profile with artifacts and with materials to support whatever you say and how wonderful you are. Your accomplishments, your knowledge, your creative materials. So basically, it's a LinkedIn profile with all of these things. It could be your validate, who validate you as a person. As a, as a professional person. Now, the LinkedIn has also his portfolio. So I want to explore several portfolios, but so I will explain you the kind of portfolios. Now we're going to the technicality. Now that we understand the concept, let's move to the technicality of this.